Hi Vivek, how are you today? I'm really excited to be here. Thank I'm, you for asking. Too. I'm so excited to be chatting with you. Before we dive into um, a lot of different exciting topics, I'd love yes. to hear more about yourself and your current role at Microsoft. Yeah, happy to. So I am uh, been in the company for about 12 to 13 years. Uh, I'm I run the client side AI team at Windows. My official title is I'm the vice president and distinguished engineer. But really, what I do is I work day in and day out with the machine learning team trying to get our models optimized and running locally on Windows. That sounds very fun. I, I'm very jealous of your role. I think it'd be fun. You know, it's a it's a good mix of continuing to innovate, um, solve really exciting challenges. I'm sure every day is very different. Oh yeah, absolutely. And especially these days with you know how AI has just yes. infected every part of our software constructs, it's shifting sands. And what we try to do is build new experiences and products on top of that. Well, speaking of that, one of the big announcements this week has been Copilot Plus PCs. Yeah. I'd love to hear uh, you share a little bit about it and why it is so exciting. For sure. So, one of the core things we did in the Copilot Plus PC is introduce this one of a kind neural processing unit, which is a 45 trillion operations per second capable computing hardware. Yeah. Its sole purpose is to accelerate AI workloads on the edge. And you know, in this age of large language models and small language models, and models are now able to solve all, so all sorts of complex problems that we never thought even two years ago we could solve, clearly an inflection point there. Copilot plus PC represents an inflection point in computing. So now we have this unique opportunity to take these two inflection points of AI in general, made with silicon, and do some really awesome magical things together. So exciting. Speaking of doing you know, awesome, magical things, what is something that you are really excited about or you've heard others speak to uh, about building on uh, Copilot Plus PC? For sure. So with the 45 TOPS neural processing unit, there are two things that are important, right? Like one is, of course, the sheer throughput. Like we can run these models really fast. But the thing that I'm really excited about is the performance and the efficiency, not just like inferences per second, but inferences per second per what? So, you know, now we get into this era of, hey, you can actually run models that are very capable, but not just once when invoked, but all the time. Yes. And now we are entering in this place with these reasoning engines, as you know, Satya has said multiple times, these models are, are always awake, they're yes. always reasoning. And how does this change you know, the way we think not just about human machine interfaces, but how machinery internally, our soft of operating system kernels themselves actually run in the background. Yes. Speaking of that, you know, I was doing quite a bit of reading uh, before we were speaking today about uh, sustainable inferences and trying to find some different real world examples to yeah. relate to, to really hone in on uh, how impactful this is. Is there anything that comes to mind uh, yeah. for someone who's watching and maybe isn't as familiar with them that you can relate it to for oh. projects or whatnot? No, for sure. So I'll go back to our journey with how we start building the Copilot Plus PC. So of course we have this 45 tops NPU today yes. with these new devices. But we started putting in NPUs a few years ago. Uh, if you remember the Surface Pro X product, like that had our first NPU. The lesson we learned that is true even today for language models, is the bigger the models, the better they are trained, more learning capacity, they get higher in quality. And where was that most applicable? Well, it was most applicable to a feature that a lot of you might know, which is called Windows Studio Effects. Yes. Camera and audio, running at 30 frames per second, audio always on when you're in like calls day in and day out, sustained AI workloads. You don't just like turn on a model to detect the person and filter, right? It's continuous. So that is what I mean by sustained inferencing. An AI model is loaded up and now it's inferencing every millisecond or every tens of millisecond and providing experience for you. It's so exciting. I want to hone in on SLMs. Can you uh, speak a little bit to 5.3 Mini and some other announcements that were made this week? Yeah, I just want to pair that up with what I just said about Windows Studio Effects. So yes. that was the AI of like the old, right? Like, yeah. okay, it's very utilitarian to be able to detect a person and blur their background, but yeah. it's like table stakes. Mm -hmm. Well, in this era of SLMs and large language models, something you've seen with GPT-4, they are generalists and so capable of doing all sorts of things. They are reasoning engines, and to some extent, they have some world knowledge. Yes. But you take out the world knowledge piece of it and just focus on reasoning engine, and then you say, well, I don't need it to be like a jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. I need to be awesome at logic. I need it to be awesome at, you know, Coding. Like if you train it in what is called the data regime and you train it just right, 
these models, they might not be trillion pyramid or long or big, but they are lean and mean and mighty. Yes. And now they can run fully on client. What can they do? Well, we're doing a bunch of things in Copilot Plus PCs, of course, mm -hmm. but the sky is the limit for all of you, right? And this is why Phi3 and the family of models is so cool because it's there, it has a capability, it has been validated against a bunch of benchmarks. And with these 45 top NPUs, they can run fully offline and what, not just like once, yeah. you can run it day in and day out and your PC won't heat up. Less, uh, longer battery life. Yes. All, yeah, it's it's really incredible. Yeah, one of, like, you know, the way I think about it is we have the CPU, we have the GPU, uh, and now we have this NPU. And an example I'm very excited for, you know, people to go do with something like Phi 3 is you have your key, right, like it's running on the GPU, and now you throw in a sustained SLM that is running on the NPU. Mm -hmm. What could it do for like, you know, NPCs? Yeah. Right? Like now you have these conversations with you. Could, could they be real? Yeah. Um, and of course, like we've seen with GPT-40, how awesome the audio is starting to become. Like, like open world games are going to just change. 100%, I know. And even the demo that was given at the keynote of yeah. this was just so exciting. I'm not a gamer, but I might become one after this. Right, <laughs> right. Like, yeah, me too, right? Like, and yeah. this would just be a completely different paradigm shift. And gaming is, of course, something that we all grew up, but what it could even mean for productivity, what it could mean for, like, you know, even doing things like trip planning. Yes. You go to, like, four different places, and you, you know, put your locations of yeah. where you're going to go in one place, and you put your car rides in another place, but what if this AI is, like, looking and observing and helping you yeah all of these things together, so it's a machine interface versus a human interface. Exactly. I also was thinking, when they were giving that demo of um, uh, the game, I was thinking about coding as well. Yeah. You know when uh, there's been times where I get on a call and for pair programming and yeah. whatnot, yeah. like this would be amazing for that yeah. and it wouldn't be any judgment of another person that you know. It's, totally. Yeah. yeah, I mean, personally, I'll say, I mean, I would, I would not recommend this, but I'm one of the, those persons who hates write comments yeah, around yeah. their code. Like someone's going to read it and help me through it. I know. But now, like it can actually understand. Maybe it doesn't have to write your code, but like, creating documentation, yes. creating comments, that would be so cool for us to incorporate. Again, this is sustained AI. Like you're not invoking write me comments. It's helping. Do you want this comment in or not? Yes. Like it can be proactive versus reactive. Hundred percent. It's like um, I have a rubber duck on my desk, but this is like the the. Um, AI version, but way better. Yeah, you know, yeah. When, when developers talk to the rubber duck, just because you yeah, sometimes just have to even speak through a problem you're right. solving or right. that collaboration uh, yeah. feature. Now, I want to shift over to APIs for Studio Effects. There's been a lot of excitement around Recall this week, yeah. and for anyone who maybe isn't as familiar with it, can you explain as to what its capabilities are? Yeah. So. Windows Studio Effects itself, very near and dear to my heart and our team's heart because that's how we bootstrapped the NPU ecosystem. So it's a set of sustained AI running on camera and audio feeds doing your background here. Developers can actually tap into it with almost no code. When they have an app that talks to the camera, they can immediately add features such as blur my background, fix eye contact, suppress you know background noise, things that were already hard enough to do, but now they're all there with like simple, what we call as device driver interfaces, DDIs, all documented publicly. And you can now have your telecommunications app or your video recording or audio recording app to supercharge with AI. Right? And and so that is what we start now with Phi Silica. So Phi, of course, we just talked about, super capable AI model. But you know what? If you want to run this on client, a few things we just need to get right. One of them is you type in a prompt, how fast does it come back to you? And that could take a lot of time, and that's where you know the user experience starts falling yes, apart. Yes. The NPU's there is going to accelerate the first, you know, token latency is what we call it with that 45 tops of compute. So you start seeing the model respond to you in sub second. We've taken all of that hard work, that device. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of work that went in there with firmware, driver level, along with of course writing optimized code. So it's all there for developers not to tap in with this PySilica model. So you can like essentially just call in an API that's texting, text out, and it's all in the back end running through all of those tokens and doing attention as efficiently as it can on the silicon. You can try to do it in a sustained way too. Exactly. I'm so excited to start building. This is so exciting. Vivek, thank you so much for taking time to chat with me today. Yeah, thank you. And hopefully you enjoy your Copilot Plus PC soon yeah. enough.